Game protagonists get amnesia more often than the cast of a daytime soap opera, but often that's for the best. You see, many of these characters have checkered pasts full of secrets so dark that only a convenient spot of memory loss can keep them from spending the whole game racked with guilt over the terrible things they've done. Consider with us now these times that memory loss made you forget your darkest secrets, and watch out for spoilers ahead for the following games. Secrets don't come much darker than secretly being a Dark Lord of the Sith. And if you were Sith Lord Darth Revan, the reviled commander of an entire Sith fleet, you'd think it would take a little more than a bump on the head to make you forget how you used to hunt and torture Jedi on the regs. And yet... As you wake up aboard the Republic ship the Endar Spire at the start of Knights of the Old Republic, you don't remember a dang thing. The Endar Spire is under attack. Hurry up, we don't have much time. Did you fall out of your bunk and hit your head? The Endar Spire is the ship we're stationed on. In fact, for most of the game, you have no memory of what was your whole deal before you woke up under attack on the Endar Spire, which suggests you're recovering from a serious concussion about which your party members could show a little more concern if I'm honest, Cuff. That smack to your head did more damage than I thought. Bastila's a Jedi. She was with the strike team that killed Darth Revan, Malak's Sith Master. Right. Okay, so about this amnesia, should I be getting like a brain scan or something? At least your friend Bastila the Jedi has an excuse in that she knows the real actual reason for your memory loss, which is that you used to be Darth Revan, Lord of the Sith, only she captured you and wiped your memory so they could use you against your old ally Darth Malak. And the Council used the Force to reprogram your mind. They wiped away your identity and turned you against your own followers. Wow. Gosh, I guess now I know all about my dark past and how strong I am and always have been in the Force. On the one hand, guys, although I could revert to my Sith ways, we've been through so much together in the course of this game, and I really feel like I've learned a lot about friendship and loyalty, and how fear leads to anger, and anger leads to hate. But on the other hand... Malik is dead. All hail the return of Darth Revan, the true Lord of the Sith. All hail Lord Revan! All hail Lord Revan! All hail Lord Revan! You win! I will not rest until I reap vengeance for my father! You know what's really embarrassing? Getting to a fighting tournament and then realising that you've forgotten why you entered in the first place. That's what happens to Siegfried from the Soul Calibur series. He knows he's there to avenge his father's death and he thinks that his father's killer can only be killed with the legendary weapon known as the Soul Edge. But as to who that killer is, his list of suspects is skimpier than Voldo's thong. That's because, surprise, Siegfried's father was killed by Siegfried himself! I know! When his father Frederick was fighting overseas, Siegfried formed a vigilante group that sought to punish deserters from the army for shirking their patriotic duty. Seeing Frederick's company returning from battle, Siegfried's gang set upon them, believing them to be deserters. Too tired to fight back, the knights were quickly overwhelmed, with Siegfried delivering the killing blow to their leader. Only when he held his severed head up in the moonlight did Siegfried realise that he'd killed his own father, which, I mean, it's going to make Christmas awkward at least. Only Siegfried. How many sins will you commit? Father, is that you? You cannot fool me. Siegfried dealt with this in the only responsible, mature way there is, running off into a forest and going mad. It was there that he convinced himself that someone else must have offed Frederick, and that now it was his solemn duty to track them down and get revenge. Also, while we're on the subject, someone else ate this piece of cake that Andy was saving, but fear not, I will not rest until I have found and killed the perpetrator. Anyone hoping that Siegfried finding the Soul Edge might bring him to some sort of sense has clearly never played a Soul game before, because all that ended up happening was the sword told him it would resurrect his father if he fed it enough souls, and Siegfried said, yes, okay, that sounds fine, and became the demonic Azure Knight Nightmare. That went well then. If only there was some way for Siegfried to easily defeat his father's killer by fighting himself. Apart from just plugging in a second controller. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. 
Good luck with that, pal. If you're Booker DeWitt, protagonist of Bioshock Infinite, there's loads you want to forget. How you took part in the massacre at Wounded Knee, how you violently broke up strikes as a member of the Pinkerton National Detective Agency, and with you having been born in the 1870s, you just know there will have been a regrettable mutton chop sideburns period at some point. But Booker does remember all these things. The one thing he tried so hard to forget was selling his daughter Anna to his alternate universe self, Father Zachary Hale Comstock. In his own universe, Booker tried to forget with 20 years of heavy drinking, but then when Robert Lutess offered him the chance to get Anna back, he stepped through a portal into a parallel dimension and his memories got all screwed up as a side effect, with the result that he started making new memories out of his old ones. It's kind of like when I think too hard about the plot of Bioshock Infinite and forget how to stand up properly. These new memories took the phrase, bring us the girl and wipe away the debt, and turned them into his current job description, making you think you're in Colombia on a mission to rescue a girl from a tower, and maybe enjoy some carnival games and a barbershop quartet, if there's time. If you should ever leave me, life would still go on. By the end of the game, you realize that Booker's mind overwrote his traumatic old memories and created new ones to hide the dark secret that he'd sold off his baby daughter all those years ago. Give me back my daughter! No! Hey, at least he's still got that fingertip. Actually, what did happen to that fingertip? You know what? I don't want to know. Mary, could you really be in this town? James Sunderland of Silent Hill 2 fame doesn't have total amnesia, but his memory is a little foggy. Boo! Boo! So, for instance, he does remember that his wife Mary is dead. That's why he's so confused when he gets a letter from her. The name on the envelope said Mary. Also, James, if the name on the envelope said Mary, doesn't that mean the letter was for Mary? Why would she write her own name on the envelope? You know what? Never mind. Well, I'm alone there now. In our special place. Waiting for you. On the off chance his wife is alive and the letter didn't just get really, really delayed in the post, James pops off to Silent Hill, which for no readily apparent reason, Mary loved so much. <laughs> Teeth, Mary, couldn't you be waiting for me in like Tahiti? Can we make that our special place? But the reason everything is so freaky here in Silent Hill is that the town is manifesting projections of James Sunderland's mind, which is more disturbed than the passenger in the aisle seat of a long haul flight. And the reason for that is the dark, forgotten secret buried deep in James's psyche, which is that actually he killed his wife after the long, hard struggle against her fatal disease left her a husk of her former self and him full of resentment. Lucky for Jimmy, Silent Hill is on hand to jog his memory with a VHS tape. It turns out James suffocated his dying wife and then repressed the traumatic memory. She, she died because she was sick. No, I killed her. Silent Hill is just doing what Silent Hill does, which is to make you face your subconscious inner demons with a therapeutic bout of horrifying actual demons. Uh, you're welcome. You deserve to die too, James. Stalker Shadow of Chernobyl drops Amnesiac U into the highly radioactive Chernobyl Exclusion Zone, which surrounds the ill-fated Ukrainian power plant. There are only a couple of clues to your forgotten past. One is a PDA, remember those, with a message telling you to kill someone called Strelok. The other is a mysterious tattoo you have no memory of getting. Hey, we've all been there.
With literally nothing else to go on, you decide you might as well head out into the wasteland and follow the instruction to kill this mysterious Strelok character, the de facto antagonist of the game. Man, you are easily swayed. Let's hope you never meet a timeshare salesman. What follows is the usual open world RPG business as you complete errands in an attempt to track down your quarry all while trying to avoid being murdered by bandits, killed by mutant wildlife, or accidentally wandering into a fatal radioactive anomaly that turns you inside out. Man, this guy Strelok better have done something pretty bad. Towards the end of the game, you meet a character called Doc who reveals the truth. You are the guy you've been attempting to kill for the majority of the game. You are Strelok, your own assassination target. Have you lost your memory or something? So does that mean the time I got eaten by a pack of mutated dogs, that was mission success? Nice one. I wish I could ask how much you remember. I don't know if there'll be anything left after I consume this drink. Don't be afraid, Daniel. I can't tell you why, but know this. I choose to forget. Try to find comfort and strength in that fact. There is a purpose. You are my final effort to put things right. With a name like Amnesia The Dark Descent, this game clearly isn't going to involve you sitting around fondly recalling old memories. And that turns out to be the case, because you start the game with only a vague recollection of who you are and where you're from. My name is Daniel. I live in London at... at... Uh, Mayfair. Possibly he's just remembering a game of Monopoly there, but at least he's got the name down. As you explore the gloomy castle you've woken up in, you discover a note from yourself telling you that you gave yourself amnesia on purpose to forget the horrible things you'd done. And also, if you find the time, could you please descend to the castle's inner sanctum and batter an old man to death? Go to the inner sanctum, find Alexander, and kill him. I mean, maybe save the amnesia potion until after battering the old man. Just a thought. As the game goes on, you find pages from Daniel's journal which fill in the blanks in your patchy memory, revealing that you stole an ancient orb, its shadowy guardian was tracking you down to kill you, and, in an attempt to stay alive, you'd come to this castle and helped its owner torture people to death so that he could prolong his life. Which, wow, is a hell of an answer to what did I do last night? Unable to deal with the guilt over his actions, Daniel drank the amnesia potion to forget his many, many crimes, which does rather raise the question of why he would leave pages of his diary detailing all his many, many crimes lying around. But hey, he is going to need loads of that amnesia potion at this rate. Does it come in six packs? Well, I can tell you all you need to know about Penn Station. Alex Mercer from Prototype spends most of the game trying to rebuild his fragmented memory. Alex wakes up in a morgue in the basement of Gentech, a biochemical research facility, and a virus called Blacklight has gripped New York City, turning its citizens into gross monsters. On the plus side though, he has developed weird shape-shifting superpowers. And they'll pay. That is quite the hangover. As the game progresses, Alex uncovers details of his past, including his relationship with ex-girlfriend Karen, the whereabouts of his sister Dana, and the fact that, in addition to being really good at fighting, he used to be a scientist at Gentech. What was it, casual Friday at the science lab? The thing is, Alex Mercer has a dark secret, one that's somehow worse than being perfectly happy to consume people to feed his monster powers. By the end of the game, you discover that it was Alex himself that released the virus in New York's Penn Station, condemning millions of New Yorkers either to death or to life as a mutated humanoid mole rat thing. With his back to the wall, he unleashed the virus on Manhattan. What Mercer did is beyond forgiveness. On the plus side, they probably had to close down that Times Square restaurant owned by Guy Fieri. Every cloud. So those were the times that Amnesia conveniently let you forget your dark secret past. But don't you forget to do... Oh no, I've forgotten what it was. I've got Amnesia. Click on the videos. That's right, click on the videos. Up here's something from us, down here's something from Outside Extra. And you won't want to forget to watch those. Where am I? What's going on? Who am I supposed to kill? <laughs> and... No one! No one! Don't kill anyone! Right, why would I have thought that? Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.